Hey gamers, what's been up? Hey look, I'm pretty excited to share with you guys some of my ideas regarding a new potential Soul Reaver game. And um, dude, I loved the Legacy of Gain series, particularly Soul Reaver 1 and 2. And I always struggle to figure out why these games never got some sort of a revival or remake or just something. These were absolute bangers. And with that said, I've got a few things together for this video and I hope you guys like it, man. This is purely from a fan perspective and nothing has been confirmed as yet. So um, I just wanted to say that, but cool. Look, hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you do, please consider smacking that sub and like button for more of these type of videos. But, um, you know, it always helps out a ton. So uh, thanks for doing that and let's get it. So now, quick breakdown, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver was an action-adventure game developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Eidos Interactive and released for the PS1 and PC back in 99. This was the second game in the Legacy of Kane series. Now the first Soul Reaver followed the story of Raziel, who was a vampire and used to be a lieutenant for another vampire dude called Kane. Now after Raziel ends up getting some wings that he's boss Kane doesn't have essentially surpassed him, Kane freaks out and orders Raziel's execution, which sends him plummeting into the abyss. But a mysterious elder god resurrects Raziel as a wraith, aka Soul Reaver, and Raziel decides to seek revenge on Kane. Dude, the game itself was epic, because you were able to shift between physical and spectral planes to solve puzzles and explore this big interconnected world and, um, oh, if you defeat your enemies, you can devour their souls and get new abilities and level up. It was just sharp and really innovative for its time. Especially a time shift mechanic. Man. Soul Reaver was a cult classic and a game that is still considered by many as one of the best games for that time. The game's success even led to a few sequels and spin-offs like Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 2 and Legacy of Kane Defiance and a multiplayer game called Noskoth. To me, Soul Reaver 1 and 2 just offered something special. Apart from its commercial and critical success, these games had a strong sense of atmosphere and world building. The games were set in a dark and gothic world filled with secrets, lore and hidden paths. The environment were immersive and detailed and, well for the time, and uh, each location just had its own distinct look and feel. And not to mention, man, that impeccable voice acting. Okay, so if we were going to explore a new Soul Reaver game, it would be cool to retain as much of the original premise as possible, or change it up a bit, you know, from a completely new perspective. Perhaps some sort of a soft reboot, but I, I do have a few story concepts here, guys, so um, I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, so uh, let's get it. Alright. The game can begin by introducing a new protagonist, a human called Marcus, who lives in a medieval kingdom called Meridian. Marcus is a skilled warrior and dreams of becoming a knight, but he's always been held back by his low status as a commoner. Now one day, while exploring the ruins of an ancient temple, Marcus stumbles across a mysterious artifact with markings of a mysterious creature that somehow teleports him into an alternate timeline where Cain is still a mortal nobleman. Marcus is shocked to discover that Cain is not this villainous vampire lord that he knew from the legends, but rather a charismatic and idealistic leader who fights for the rights of the common people. As Marcus explores this alternate timeline, he also meets the then vampire hunter called Raziel. They learn more about Cain's past and events that led to him to become a vampire and discovers that Cain was once a champion of the people, but his idealism was shattered when he witnessed the corruption and cruelty of those in power. Cain was eventually betrayed by those he trusted, and in a moment of desperation, he made a pact with a dark entity that transformed him into a vampire. Through Marcus and Raziel's interactions with Cain, player gets a deeper understanding of Cain's character and motivations, and they also witness the events that set up the stage for the previous Soul Reaver games, where Raziel ends up following Cain. As Marcus continues his journey, he discovers that the alternate timeline is not a perfect world as there is still injustice and conflicts where Cain's idealism is tested by the harsh realities of ruling a kingdom. Marcus and Raziel help Cain navigate these challenges, even as Marcus struggles to find his way back to his own timeline. 
In the game's climax, Marcus, Raziel and Kane must confront the dark entity that transformed Kane into a vampire. They work together using their unique skills and knowledge of the world to defeat this entity to restore balance to the timeline. However, Marcus is gravely injured in this confrontation and the entity's defeat, however, grants Kane the ability to foresee future events, causing him to question his own choices and the nature of power. In the game's final moments, Marcus chooses to sacrifice himself to give Kane and Raziel the opportunity to change their fate for the betterment of their people, with the hopes that human and vampire can coexist in harmony and enter a new age of prosperity. As Kane and Raziel depart, they're left to ponder the lessons that they have learned and the impact of their choices will have on their future and the world around them. Alright gamers, so um, that's the first concept, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but um, here's the next one. The game can begin by introducing us to Raziel, who awakens in a new body after being reincarnated by the Elder God. The Elder God, who has somehow managed to return to the physical world, influenced Raziel to hunt down Cain, whom the Elder God sees as a threat to its existence. Raziel, who's under Elder God's control, sets on a mission to destroy Cain. As Raziel hunts down Cain, he'll learn more about the world of Nosgoth and its complex history. Along the way, Raziel discovers that the world is not as black and white as he once thought, and that Cain may not be the villain that he was made out to be. However, the Elder God's influence over Raziel remains strong, and the player must navigate these challenges of Raziel's inner conflicts as he struggles with the conflicting desires of his own soul and the Elder God's will. In the game's midpoint, you can switch and play as Kane, who is facing the repercussions of his actions in the previous Soul Reaver games. Because look, Kane is determined to break the cycle of violence that has plagued Nosgoth for centuries, but these efforts are hindered by the arrival of Raziel, who is now even more powerful under the Elder God's control. As you navigate Kane's story, you also learn some of his motivations, his history and his leadership or relationship with Raziel. You also discover new locations, meet new characters off inside into deeper mysteries of the world. In the game's climax, Kane and Raziel confront each other in a final battle that will determine the fate of Nothgoth. Using the skills and knowledge of the world, it must also guide Kane and Raziel towards some sort of a resolution that will either bring about a new era of peace or plunge Nothgoth into darkness forever. The ending will be decided by the choices you make throughout the game and will be influenced by the characters you choose to side with and the actions they take. The game will also explore themes of redemption, destiny and the consequences of one's choices while offering a fresh take on the iconic Soul Reaver characters and setting. Or, if we were to go the remake route instead of a straightforward retelling of the first Soul Reaver game with Raziel, the remake can also incorporate time travel introduce new elements to alter the timeline, similar to Final Fantasy VII Remake. Kane could also take on a central role in this remake, continuing his story from the end of Defiance with the Purified Reaver, where you could even control Kane as he tries to preserve the original Soul Reaver events and prevent interference from other time travelers who seek to disrupt Raziel's loop. This way, the remake could both appeal to new fans and satisfy existing ones who want to see Kane's story progress. Look. Whichever direction, either in the form of a remake or a reboot, it would sure as I'll be good to see the series return. Alright guys, let's talk a bit about some cool gameplay ideas that could be implemented. First up, let's talk a bit about the combat. Now the existing combat system in the series is great, but imagine we could take it to the next level. The new game could introduce a more fluid and dynamic combat system with more varied moves and combos and as you progress throughout the game you could also upgrade your weapons and abilities allowing for a greater sense of progression and customization. Skill trees could also serve as a means of upgrading and it's not just combat that can be improved. What about an interactive environment that allows you to use your surroundings to gain an advantage in combat? You could also use objects in the environment as weapons or hide behind cover to avoid enemy attacks. And of course, don't forget about the puzzles. 
The game could also introduce more complex puzzles that requires you to use their abilities and environment to progress. Another idea could be to have multiple playable characters. Each character could have their own unique abilities and play style, allowing players to experience the world from different perspectives and adding that replayability to the game. Further to that first story idea with Marcus, Raziel and Kane. Building on the time travel mechanics of the previous games, the new game could introduce a new ability that allows you to manipulate time in a new and interesting way. Maybe also through a skill tree upgrade, which could perhaps open up one of four different time periods to go back to. What about the stealth gameplay? Imagine being able to sneak up on enemies and take them out silently. This would also add that new layer of strategy to the game and also provide a different playstyle for those of you who prefer a more tactical approach. Let's not forget about the unique features of the PS5 controller. Man, this needs to be tapped into more. I'm talking about the haptic feedback which can be used to enhance immersion and combat. And the triggers could also become harder to pull as your weapons take damage, simulating a feeling of a damaged weapon that's more difficult to wield. The DualSense touchpad could also be used to provide more intuitive control scheme for abilities and spells. And the PS5's motion controls could also be used to provide a more immersive experience in puzzles and exploration. The building speaker on the controller could also be used to provide that audio feedback during gameplay, like the sounds of your character's heartbeat as your health gets low. Man, it's just so many examples of how a new story of a game can take advantage of the unique features of the PS5 controller to enhance the gameplay experience. Alright, so for the new game, I would obviously love to be back in the shoes of Raziel. As a Soul Reaver betrayed by his master Kane, Raziel possesses remarkable abilities such as phasing through solid objects and manipulating the environment. His unique connection with the spirit realm also grants him a significant advantage against his adversaries. Look, the return of Cain is also essential and should be a playable character, allowing us to delve deeper into his backstory. Cain, the one who is initially responsible for transforming Raziel into a Soul Reaver, remains mysterious, leaving his true intentions unclear. The relationship between Cain and Raziel is complex and intricate, adding layers of depth in their dynamic. Expanding upon the original characters would be a great opportunity, particularly exploring Raziel's interactions with the clan and the clan formation essentially delving deeper into that origin story of his encounters and collaboration with Kane. This fresh perspective would also provide you with a deeper understanding of these characters and the complex relationships. One thing is for certain, it's time for the series to return and as a massive fan, I've been harping on about this for quite some time so um, look, I believe this series has got so much more potential and um, yeah, it's a wrap on a few of my concepts for a new Soul Reaver game. Hope you guys enjoyed and yeah, what do you guys think? What are some of your ideas? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, you guys know what to do. So uh, rock on gamers. Keep it fresh and I'll see you for the next one.